Today on Houston Life, meet the young girl whose cancer diagnosis sparked her passion to pursue a career in medicine. How a partnership between the Make-A-Wish Foundation and Texas Heart Institute helped make her dreams come true. Plus, secrets for growing your own garlic at home. Find out how you can easily plant this kitchen staple this fall. Then, get your sweet tooth ready for a new hit show coming to the Food Network. We chat with Sunny Anderson about her new competition series, Chocolate Meltdown. And we are continuing to celebrate Hispanic heritage by making a stop at a local Latin record shop that's been serving the community for more than 50 years. All that and more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life. It is Monday, September 27th. I'm Courtney Savala. This is Tex. Yeah, and it looks like Tex just had a, a fresh blowout. Hi, everybody. I'm Derek Shore. Glad to have you with us today. He's very sleepy, but he, he has his cologne on. Very fresh today on this Monday. He is um, very zen. And you know, right before the show started, just a few moments ago, Tex was sort of pacing around the desk. Sometimes, you know, he, he likes to sit by me, sometimes by you. I gotta say, it's a little chilly in here, though. So uh, I need some uh, warm puppies to, love. to cuddle with. Yeah. Well, he's as cuddly as can be today. Can you believe her? Look at him. I'm ready for my close up. He's, he's so <laughs> cute. Hello, he's Tex, so this camera. Hello. Um, it's already the end of the month. Can you even believe this? And no, October is right around the corner, and I am so glad it's Monday. You know, people sometimes have a case of the Mondays. I was so excited to come to work today. I dashed out of uh, the studio the other day when you were down at NRG Center for the Texans game. We go off the air. Our show goes off the air at 4 o'clock. Somehow, I was able to jump on a 5 o'clock flight and get to Vegas. I know, magical powers, right? I don't <laughs> know how that happened. <laughs> it was so, it worked out, though. It worked out. And uh, Private jet in the parking lot? Is we, that what that was? Yes, don't tell anyone. So we escaped to Vegas. We actually went with uh, one of our coworkers. You know her, Susan Miller. And we dashed over to Vegas because Michael Buble Love. was playing in concert. And this was the first concert we had been to in I don't even remember how long, but it felt so good. We all wore our masks. Of course, you had to show proof of vaccination to get in. But Michael Buble is such a phenomenal talent. And it was also just fun to go back to Vegas and, and check things. You know, the Bellagio, I hadn't seen that place in 20 years the fountain show is still the same oh yeah it's incredible I could watch it uh, all day and all night and then we went over to the link high roller have you seen this the large Ferris yes, wheel yes uh-huh it was so great we went up the views are just incredible we timed it at sunset of course they have a, an open bar in that thing so we had a really really nice time getting away it was great to spend time with Sue and her husband Scott we love so them. great looks like a great time in Vegas where did he play uh, he played at the T-Mobile Center, and pro tip uh, for anyone visiting, there's this little piano bar across the street. It's called Nomad. This is where we ended up, actually a couple nights. The uh, <laughs> We just moved right in. <laughs> we moved right in. <laughs> it's comfortable, it's intimate, and you know, we're a little more low-key. We don't go to all the big clubs, and so finding a little piano bar was just our speed, and we sang and put in requests. It was awesome. Yeah, it's great. Gr Vegas is, it's so good that it's back to, you know, get those performers, get those concerts, get that city up and running just kind of the lights uh, of the city so it's wonderful weather was good too weather was great and it really it's a place where you can make any sort of vacation out of it you can sit by the pool and go to the spa or you can go you know dance all night we met people who literally were getting back to the hotel at 7 a.m. well that's the thing about Vegas you have no idea what time it could be 7 a.m. p.m. no clue none yeah. whatsoever we did go to the new Taco Bell Cantina where you can get margaritas at the Taco Bell stop it I'll tell you about that later I'll tell you about that later I want to hear about your weekend well I zipped out of town too not Thursday night because we had to do the Texans special, so we were part of that uh, when the Texans played uh, Thursday night football, so that was super fun. Didn't zip out then, but I did zip out Friday and met Beth, best friend Lori and her husband John in Scottsdale. Uh, that was my, um, I'm going to call her my cousin, Greta. That's Orlando's cousin's Chalo's wife. So there you go. She's in the red. I'm in the middle. Best friend Lori there you is on the end. You look so tan. Well, we were soaking up the sun. And Lori I did does get a, too. I did get a spray tan before I left. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, but it was a lovely weekend in Scottsdale. John and Lori love going to Scottsdale. It's like their, their favorite place to go and disconnect. And at the Kirlin, this is the Westin, Fridays and Saturday nights at 630, they a bagpiper. 
um, at sunset. I love the sound of a bagpipe. So we sat in front of the fire, we had cocktails, beautiful views. It was so lovely. And just an adult weekend. It was so much fun. Oh, how beautiful. It is good to get away and recharge once in a while, but it's always so good to get home and sleep in your own bed. It is. I did not see any scorpions. I was on the look, though, because they are out and about. Didn't see one. My Could sister get an ant bite, though. lives near uh, Scottsdale. <laughs> you, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Scorpions are a thing. My mom was just visiting yeah. my sister in Arizona, and they actually went, they took the boys. I have twin nephews who are seven. They went out on a scorpion hunt one night. Right. With a black light because they glow in the dark. I, it's crazy. I don't need to see it. I'll believe it. I don't I'm need to see okay. it. But yeah, everything's good. Later. So it was super fun to get away and just relax for a quick weekend, but super fun. Good. Well, glad you're back, and it's great to be back with all of you. Did you uh, happen to see Jane Lynch's tweet about her travel hack? I did. Speaking of traveling, I think we have a photo of this. It is pretty genius. You know, sometimes you go to a hotel, and then the sun comes in in the morning, and you can't sleep because the light <laughs> comes in. There it is. Tips for... Keeping hotel curtains closed and light out. You're welcome. She's just taken a hanger and clipped it right on. I think that that's a great hack. But see, I wear an eye mask, so I don't see the light anyway. What do you have? A, do you have a hack? Mm, you know, I, my travel hack. I always carry just a little, an empty spray bottle. And when we get to the hotel and we unpack, I fill the spray bottle with water. I spray down all my clothes. The wrinkles fall out, and then they're ready when you need them. We don't even hassle with the hotel iron anymore because water. I mean, you know, wrinkle release when you spray. Well, you just put water on your clothes. You don't need to spray all that yeah. stuff on it. How about you? Um, pack as much as you possibly can oh. into your suitcase and hope that it's not 50 pounds and over. <laughs> there is a little uh, scale that you can get on Amazon. They're five bucks and you can weigh your luggage I to know. be sure you don't go over. Eileen, my mom loves the little handheld scale. Orlando said to me when we were leaving, he goes, you realize we're going for two nights. I'm like, huh. I need options. Did you pack that much stuff? I did, because I never know what I'm going to feel like what I'm going to wear. I like to leave extra room in my luggage, though, in case you buy something while you're away. Cause always get a bobble. To... I always have to have like, oh, bought this in Vegas. Oh, got this in Scottsdale. You know what I mean? So I have a little little buffer room, but no, I had to, I, I'm a terrible packer. Yeah. All those packing cubes. Packing cubes, though, are a life saver, saver for packing. Yeah, they're great. The problem, though, is I sometimes will panic pack and I, I kind of like black out and I don't know, okay, we're going to a warm weather climate. Do I need a oh. swimsuit? And then I pack everything. That's me. And, and then I don't wear most of it. I, that, that's me 95% mm. of the time. Okay. Well, yeah. maybe we could do a segment on that. We'll work on that. <laughs> okay. So the boys have been freaking out because they're trying to figure out Halloween decorations, costumes, because Friday, you know, all the Halloween decorations are out in yeah, the oh neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are a little bit behind. So we need a plan. Um, but if you are thinking, hey, what's like the hot costume for this year? Remember the Met Gala? Of course, there's some good things that Just came out of that. Just from a few weeks ago, yeah. Yeah. Well, Kim Kardashian, Kim K, that is going to be a legit Halloween costume. Everybody is freaking out about oh, this. Oh, man. Um, you know, that included, her, her look here also included 75 inches of hair that cost 10 thousand dollars this makes me claustrophobic though just oh, looking at it i can't imagine wearing something plus i'm so over wearing a mask that right. to have something covering my entire face i i don't know if i could so here's off. here's the said halloween costume oh. um this met gala look so popular company yandy has created a halloween version as you see on the screen it's 99.99 wow it's ponytail not included <laughs> So you have to work on your ponytail. own ponytail there. Full article, though, on page6.com. Something tells me there's going to be a lot of Kim K's rolling around. By oh, the way, so. Halloween's on a Sunday this year. Oh, so when do we trick or treat? All weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and by the Friday, way... Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If your kid, like, you know, Connor said to me, Mom, I don't think I can trick or treat this year because I'm going to be 14 and maybe people think I'm too old. I said... Absolutely not. You can come back to our house and I'll pretend like you don't. I don't know you and you trick or treat here. I'm, at least he's out trick or treating and doing something fun. When is the official cutoff though? Because I was trick or treating through my senior year in high school. When I, I was think 17. it's great if you want to dress up, wear a costume. I support it. I do too. Right? I support it. I do too. You should trick or treat as long as you would like to, which is why I still do it. Do you think it's weird that people trick or treat with a newborn? Like a baby that can't eat the candy <laughs> yes, versus a child who will want the candy? Choking hazard. That, right. is, that is a little bit suspicious, isn't it?
Just saying. Uh, listen, during our uh, time in television, I know you've met a lot of people, I've met a lot of people, and there is, is someone who we just have to acknowledge today, Frances Sissy Farenthold. She passed away yesterday. She was suffering from Parkinson's disease. 94 years old, she was born in 1926. I had the honor of sitting down with Frances uh, and some of our team members last year. What a remarkable woman. Quality. Uh, here's some video from that interview. She's so modest and so lovely. And you know, when she when she went to law school in her class of 800 students, she was one of three women. Mm. She ended up serving in the Texas House of Representatives as the only woman, alongside Barbara Jordan in the Senate. They uh, co-sponsored an equality bill together, and really, that was her mission, to give people a voice who had no voice. It, she wasn't just a champion for women's rights, she was a champion for underrepresented people and groups all over the place. So her burial will be private, but a public in-person memorial will be held at the University of Texas School of Law at a later date. That is just one of the places where she taught law school. Um, she's just a remarkable woman and, and what a huge loss, but so glad that uh, she left her mark on, her, on our nation. Her really. legacy lives on. I mean, her entire life has been um, a story to be told. Uh, I remember when you sat down with her and the story aired here on Houston Life. It was incredible, and I know how much she meant to you in that moment, but um, it, it, the joy of, of sharing her legacy and speaking about her, our hearts go out to her family as well. Yeah, and a mom of five, too, yeah. and a wife. She did it all, so we will certainly miss you, Francis. All right, let's take a turn. Still to come on Houston Life, Anderson Cooper opens up about his son inheritance. This is interesting. Find out how much of his fortune he plans to leave to his son. Plus, Joe Sam is learning more about Latin music at a very popular record store. Not many of these exist very much anymore. And Courtney, in fact, this is the last one here in Houston. When we come back, we're going to be telling you all about Mimo's Record Shop. Not only are they providing great music in the Latin community, but they're also giving back to the community as well in service. Much more on Mimo's Record Shop when we return. We're going to head inside now. Okay, we were talking about this guy, Anderson Cooper, right before the break, and apparently he will not leave his inheritance to his son, his huh. son Wyatt. Um, I believe his son is um, maybe 18 months old, that something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. He recently said on a podcast that he will not leave any inheritance to his son. Of course, his mom is Gloria Vanderbilt. She was born into one of America's most wealthiest families whose fortune came from the railroad empire. Now, uh, Cooper said that he, quote, I don't believe in passing on huge amounts of money. I don't know what I'll have, but I'm not that interested in money, and I don't intend to have some sort of pot of gold for my son. In wow. a recent interview where he talked about in his book how his family, uh, the Vanderbilt family, you know, came to the rise with their fortune and everything that they spent their money on and then eventually kind of lost the fortune. Um, he remembers after his dad died, his mom was saying something about, oh, it's okay, something about money being around all the time. And he said that was a lesson he had to learn very young that he had to manage his yes. mom's money as a child. Oh, wow. And so there wasn't, because she just went through life thinking, well, it's, it's, I always have this money. So I think maybe that's where this is coming from. He also said that, um, you know, his mom did say to him, you go to college and then you get out. Mm -hmm. Kind of make your own your own work. Well, and he really did make his own way uh, because yes. I remember watching him on Channel One News in the early 90s. Yes. And he was out there working as a reporter and he was drawing his own salary. He wasn't living on his family's money. So I think it's an interesting strategy where parents want to do everything they possibly can for their children, sometimes giving them everything. I don't know, do you create a lazy kid if they don't learn how to work hard for themselves? Right, a blessing and a curse, if you will, Maybe. right? Yeah. 
Okay. I well, know. Very interesting. Why don't we bring in Lauren Kelly with our question of the day. Hi, Lauren. I feel like it's a little bit unfair, though. If your dad does have money, maybe he can just leave you like a little well, bit. Well, and doesn't he make 12 million a year or something yeah, like that? Uh, so we see, just a li little help, Dad. Just, just a, a little bit. Like but, you know, we, uh, we want to hear from you from character traits to odd collections. What is something that you don't want to inherit from your parents? And, of course, we've already got some great responses <laughs> coming uh -oh. in. Let's ho head over to Nancy's first. She says, too late, already inherited this. Him loud and proud. <laughs> I love that, Nancy. <laughs> Katie says, my mom's recipe for meatloaf. What's wrong with that one? It must have been bad, huh? Oh. Okay, Karen says, the many cuckoo clocks that my mom has, those things drive me nuts, all go off seconds <laughs> apart. Oh my gosh, that would keep me up the entire night. <laughs> oh. Well, you guys head over to the Houston Live Facebook page and join the conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little bit later on. I'm trying to think, Derek and Courtney, what, what do you think? What would you not want to inherit from your parents or your grandparents well I mean so you all know my father passed away in January and we had virtually no relationship yeah and when Brandon and I were up there with my sisters and my mom like cleaning out his stuff I thought wow this is such an irony that I'm now like cleaning out all right. this stuff from someone I didn't even know so I think stuff my mom has always said you don't own things things own you yes so I think yes. a house full of stuff is kind of kind of crippling just but if there wasn't then you wouldn't have gotten to know him maybe yeah. Later, right? Yeah, right? I mean, there true. wouldn't be anything to go yeah. through. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, personal belongings, yeah. we attach memories to them, right? Right, so, right. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. Okay, fair that's enough. Cool. I know. I know. I'm like that. I'm the first comment, you know, uh, loud and proud. That's us, Mom. <laughs> We're there. You got to fight to be heard. <laughs> All right. We'll continue this conversation okay, a little bit later. Good. How about that? All well, right. 53 years ago, a local record shop in East End opened with a goal of bringing the sound of Latin music and history right here to Houston. And as we continue to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, Joe Sam is finding out how they really stayed in rhythm for so long and their plans for the future. Hi, Joe. Hey, Courtney, Derek, that's right. So Memo's Record Shop right here in East End. Absolutely amazing record shop. They have so much different types of music that the community come out here to enjoy. And speaking with me right now is Memo himself to give us all of that. This is really great because you've been here for such a long time. We want to know what has kept you guys going for so long. Well, you know, to, uh, next week, next week in October, it will be 52 years that wow. we open the store. Wow. 52 years and... Uh, this building, this store down in the East End, Magnolia Park. And uh, through this store, they've been working the most famous artists from Mexico, Spain, Central America, South America. And when we speak of all of those really famous artists, you've been with a lot of them. You've met them in person. You can see them right now from Selena to all of the other greats of Latin music. And it really has made yourself be proud of who you've met and what you've done here in the community. Talk about some of the people you've met and your most memorable. Well, because be before I started the record shop, I was a promoter. I bring a lot of stars to Houston. Dallas, McAllen, Corpus Christi, all the state with all, all those uh, movie stars. Mm. So that's why you see so many artists and movie stars inside of the store because they used to come over here. Of course, the best ones like Vicente Fernandez, Juan Graviel, uh, Rocio Durcal, Jose Jose, all oh. those artists have been going to this store. The list goes on and on. And you know what? We're going to stay with you and talk a little bit more, not only about the artists and the different celebrities that you've met, presidents that you've met yes. as well, but we will also be talking about his family because it, the genes just don't run within him. It came from the father and the uncle. We're going to talk a little bit about that and about some of the amazing music you can come and check out here at Memo's Record Shop. Right now, Courtney and Derek, we're going to send things back to you, and I'm going to go and find me some records to play. I love it. Thanks, Sounds Joe. Good one of a kind. When we come back, attention home gardeners. It is fall, but that does not mean it is too late to work on your garden. How about a crash course on how we can all learn to plant garlic this fall? Jen McDonald's going to show us how it's done. Garlic, it's a staple in every recipe, oh, yeah. right? And from something savory in your garden to something sweet for Halloween, later we chat with the new host of the Food Network's Chocolate Meltdown. All that and more when Houston Life returns.
Well, welcome back to Houston Life. Fall has fallen, right? And if you are looking for things to plant in your garden when the cooler temperatures finally arrive, you might want to add garlic to your list. Here with easy tips to help get us started, Jen McDonald with Rooted Garden. Welcome back to Houston Life. Thank you for having me. You were it's here a month here. ago, and our herb garden that we planted here, we actually have it at home. It's thriving. So thank you for that. Garlic, this is something a lot of people might not even think to I plant. I know, I know. But garlic is so much fun, and it's really easy to plant in Houston. And here is why. So every time you go to the farmer's market, you probably see garlic or Whole Foods. The next time you go, I want you to grab a clove, a, I'm sorry, a garlic bulb, a bulb. an organic bulb okay. of garlic. Okay. And then what we're going to do is actually put it in the fridge for 30 to 40 days. What? Oh. I know. It sounds weird, right? Why it's, do you do that? Garlic is best planted in northern climates, but since we don't get that cold, the cold snap of winter, we actually need to mimic it here in Houston. So we're going to pop it in the fridge for 30 to 40 days. It's called vernalization. Okay. And then once that's done, right after Halloween, you can get your garlic bulb out, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to let you do this one. Okay. And I'm going to do this one. So the way we're going to plant garlic is we're going to take off the outer paper sheet. Okay. It's like unwrapping a present. And you want, do you want the paper completely gone so you're actually exposing that well, clove? Well, you're going to leave the clove. The cloves themselves can have the paper sheet. Okay. But you're really just trying to get the cloves. Like the excess off, yes. kind of. Okay. Okay, so once you do that and you have these beautiful little cloves, you're actually ready to plant. Okay, so, so you've waited a month. And we're breaking these apart. Yes, you're breaking these apart. And these are nice and big. So the bottom here, this is the root, the top, this is the tip. Okay. And so literally when you're planting garlic, you're going to plant four to six inches deep with your clove. And you're just I'm pushing just them my down finger. into the soil? Yep. So... Imagine your index finger is three to four inches. Stick it all the way in. Okay. There you go. And I guess you could use like a little helper stick or something if you, you want. You can absolutely do that. Okay. And then we're going to go all the way around this planter. I'm going to help you out there. It is that easy. It's that easy. And this, this is a great vegetable to grow because you literally plant. You water about one inch a week, which is what you would regularly water your garden. And then you walk away. This takes nine months to actually be harvestable garlic. Oh, okay. So this is a little bit of a commitment then, but worth it because in the end, herbs, garlic, I mean, these things that we use in cooking all the time, they really add up if yes. you're constantly buying them. Absolutely. And this is like, garlic is like being pregnant. You have to wait nine months, but the result is actually really fun, <laughs> Jen, right? You are hilarious. <laughs> garlic is just like being pregnant, it's right? Like Can't we all pregnant. agree? Yes. Okay. okay. So, so I, then we've planted our garlic and we're going to water it lightly. Okay. And we're going to wait two weeks and then you'll start to see some shoots come up. Okay. So, but even when you start seeing the shoots though, again, you wait full nine months. Yep. What are we talking? A patio, a backyard, full sun, shade? You want full sun. This is just like growing vegetables in a vegetable garden. And you can actually grow this in rows in between some of your other vegetables or your herbs. You just have to remember where you've planted it because you don't want to disturb it. Okay, gotcha. And how do you know when it needs to be watered? Just like any other green, just you like just wash the greens? Just like any other green, that's right. So I would say about an inch of water per week, and that's just on a normal, like if you're using drip irrigation or low spray heads, or you're just using your garden hose, just a light watering, you know, once a day, once every other day when the temperatures drop. And then in nine months, you're going to have a really fun crop to harvest. Okay, I think this is super cool. And you know, if there are little ones around the house, it would be a great thing to get the kids involved in. Yes. Sort of like a little science project that you can eat in it's nine months. so much fun. So we're planting this between mid-October and mid-November. So after Halloween, that's a time, get the kids, take them outside, break apart your garlic bulb, and get these cloves and plant them in the and ground. And by next summer, we'll be ready. Jen, That's thank right. you so much. Thank that was fun. You. If you all would like to connect with Jen, you can swing on by the Scene on Houston Life section of our website. Now we're going to hand things off to Courtney with a look at One Teen's mission to pay it forward. Hey, Courtney. Hey, Derek. Coming up, the inspiring story of how One Teen's cancer diagnosis helped her discover a passion to help others through medicine. We're also going to get a check of what's coming up for the news at 4. Houston Life is back in two minutes.
Welcome back to Houston Life on this Monday. Courtney and Derek back with you at 3.30. We're laughing because we're already <laughs> reading your comments. Earlier we asked you from character traits to odd collections, what is something you might not want to inherit from your parents? Let's get to your comments. Corey writes in, Lord, I hope my mom isn't on this feed today, but I do not want to inherit my parents' loud after dinner <laughs> burping. They used to have a little class about it when we were growing up, but the older they get, the less they care who is around. When the gas hits, it's coming out loud. Oh my gosh, Corey, that is hilarious. <laughs> this one's good too. Michelle writes in, junk, keeping every single thing that's ever entered the house. Please purge annually. I need to open whites, uh, need open white space and clear surfaces. And nothing like an empty shelf at home, right? I think, uh, <laughs> Michelle, we're probably related. Stacy writes in this horribly terrifying butterfly collection. It hangs in my parents' hallway. <laughs> what is, what's terrifying about it? I think it's beautiful. It reminds me of a science lab. This one, Lillian, this is oh. hilarious. There's so many people that can relate to oh, this. Oh, yes. The Hummel figurines collection. They're adorable. I think my grandmother, I think my grandma sure had some of these. Do you have them in your house? I do not. Oh, that was the point of the question. Things I don't want to inherit. Right. <laughs> it's a lovely figurine. I don't want it. There we go. You. Now let's thank check you. in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what is coming up at the top of the hour. I hey, have guys. Them. I have them in my house. <laughs> do you? you do not. No. Yes, they were my mom's. I mean, what am I going to do with them? Yeah. <laughs> That's sweet, though. <laughs> my, my we're mom, sorry. My mom collects I'm roosters, sorry. and I don't, have, I don't have any plans Your on having no. Your mom collects roosters? She collects roosters. Well, not live roosters. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> the figurines. Yeah, 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 figurines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like rooster figurines, like big ones, oh. small ones, and I don't plan on, on bringing those into <laughs> my, my, my world. <laughs> maybe you can pass them down to your daughters. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if they want them either. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, oh, <laughs> but yeah, but for, you know, maybe we can have we, Frank. We can have a party. You know, your a party. Your figurines, and my my roosters. Yeah, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, mine are kind of broken anyway. In places, oh. so. It's okay. They have the Super sentimental glue. value. I know. Okay, strictly that. Okay, everybody enjoyed the weekend. <laughs> yeah, gosh, yeah. it was so nice. That was amazing. I'll yes. get a, a really nice one because things are changing. Today's sort of the change day. We're starting to see the mugginess certainly come back. Temperatures in the upper 80s and 90s. And as you go for that walk or that jog, pick the kids up off the field. 86 at 5, 84 at 6, then 80 and 78. So warm and muggy, maybe a shower. We've seen a little bit here at the coast, but not much. These have been right around Anahuac, just a sea breeze coming in. And also down around Santa Fe, Alvin, Liverpool, Angleton, Lake Jackson, a few showers there. Most of the actions really stayed off into the Gulf today. I think it's going to change tomorrow because I want to show you this. There's this big low sitting right over Albuquerque. And you can really see it with this water vapor. See that low spinning? We're going to get the Gulf moisture, and that low is going to start spinning these storms around it in our direction. So between the two, that's why you've heard about all these chances for rain as we move into this week. So the future cast shows us moisture coming in off the Gulf tomorrow. And look what's happening out there as those showers rotate around that low. So I would, the bottom line, I would find your favorite umbrella and make sure you have it nearby. It's going to be a warm, muggy evening. The storms start tomorrow. We'll talk about that at 4 o'clock. And the tropics are still trucking. Don't forget about those. Okay, we know you have your eyes on them, Frank. Thank you. All right, look now at some of the other stories that we're covering this afternoon. An emotional day for HPD as one of their own is laid to rest. Final goodbyes today for Officer William Bill Jeffrey. He was killed in a shootout last week while serving a drug warrant. We'll share some of the tributes ahead at 4 o'clock. We're also getting an update on the current hospitalization status in the greater Houston area when it comes to COVID. The numbers have been trending in a positive direction for several days. Do doctors see that trend continuing? We're going to take a closer look at that. And a dog owner from Louisiana reunited with his pet after Hurricane Ida. The Houston connection to that reunion and how it finally came together for a very happy oh, ending. Oh, look at the little hug. I think we're going to see some wagon tails, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I love or it. A wagon tail. I yeah. love a happy ending. All right, guys, we'll see you at 4 o'clock. Okay. All righty. In honor of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, we're shining a spotlight on an inspiring story that's sure to provide some Monday motivation. At just 14 years old, Michaela was given news that no person wants to hear, a cancer diagnosis. And while battling the disease, Michaela was approached by the Make-A-Wish Foundation. But instead of requesting to travel the world or meet her favorite celebrity, she made a unique wish inspired by the team of doctors working to save her life. I linked up with the Make-A-Wish Foundation during the summer of my eighth grade to ninth grade. And for me, it was really more of what could I 
If I had all the money in the world, what could I not do? I was definitely shocked to receive um, that diagnosis. It was really the initial, oh, you have cancer, that gave me that shock. And I just, I don't know, I couldn't think. I, I didn't even think it was real. I woke up the next morning and it was like, that didn't actually happen. My physicians and my parents and I decided to go on immunotherapy. And after several months on immunotherapy, my tumors had shrunk dramatically because of this drug that I'd been receiving that I knew virtually nothing about. I wanted to learn more about it and I wanted to learn more about medicine in general. And I was interested in surgery. And at that point, I made my wish to uh, be a cardiothoracic surgeon um, for a week, shadow the residents, go into the OR. I remember getting the call from um, my wish grantor, Alan. He told me they could do it and I was very happy. Um, and then in the fall of 10th grade um, is when I went to Texas Heart Institute for my wish. Um. This really was an experience. I, I couldn't just walk off the street and say, I want a shadow, like, let, please let me in. Um, that would not have worked. And Make-A-Wish was able to do that. It was a jam-packed week full of amazing and exciting adventures and learning and um, meeting with so many unique and experienced people um, who really know what they're doing and who are passionate about sharing um, what they do. I think it, the experience at Texas Heart Institute um, really solidified what I wanted to do. So I'm currently working as an EMT in the ambulance, and I'm also going to school now on the pre-med track to pursue an, either an MD or MD-PhD program. Being able to apply that and apply what I learned in the classroom to help um, patients in the real world is, is one of the most exciting things that I could do, um, which is why now I'm an EMT, but why I'm on the pre-med track and why I want to become a doctor. Oh, wow. Incredible, right? Incredible. And talk about paying it forward right. and doing something, taking a terrible situation and making something great out of it. She clearly has a bright future ahead. And the track, too, I just can imagine the type of physician she's going to be. She's been in those shoes and looked so comfortable, even just walking in, observing for that one week. That's where she's meant to be. Michaela, what a wonderful story. By the way, you can find the full article with Michaela's story on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Definitely Monday motivation. Yes, remarkable young woman. Now let's check in with Lauren Kelly, who has a sweet look at a brand new show. Hey, Lauren. Hey, guys, this is going to be a good one. Chef and Food Network star Sonny Anderson is sharing info on hosting the sweet new food competition show, Chocolate Meltdown. Yum! Houston Life will be right back. The new food competition show, Chocolate Meltdown, Hershey's After Dark, premieres tonight on the Food Network. It is a four-episode series where skilled pastry chefs compete to create the most mind-bending chocolate pieces and aim to win a year's supply of Hershey's candy, a Hershey's Park vacation, and even a cash prize. I got a chat with the host of the show, Food Network star Sonny Anderson, all about this sweet new Halloween-themed series. What up, world? It's the scariest time of year, and we're here celebrating it at Hershey Park. Everyone's gone home, the rides are still lit, but wait a minute, who's gonna start this ride? You know what's really funny is that we both have a background in radio broadcast. I worked in the radio business oh. for 20 years here in Houston. I know you started as an Army radio broadcaster, and then you kind of changed your route and went to like the more commercial route. But let me tell you where we differ. You went on to actually become a very, very good chef and you're very good in the kitchen. You're very good with culinary things. I am kicked out of the, sh out of the kitchen. I am a disaster. You can ask my boyfriend, my family. That's where it really failed for me. You know what, being kicked out of the kitchen is not a bad thing. Cause like growing up, that's how my parents were. That's how my grandma was. It was all about like, get out of the kitchen, let me do my thing. And because of that, I got to kind of sit and study and watch them perfect their craft, which allows me now to have my own kind of style and my own kind of way of doing things. So it's not that bad to be 
kicked out of the kitchen. And you don't have to know how to cook, honey, as long as you know how to make reservations, okay? <laughs> that I can do. <laughs> you're all over the Food Network. This is going to be so much fun. They've got a huge Halloween lineup and Chocolate Meltdown, Hershey's After Dark. This is going to premiere on Monday, September 27th. You had me at like the first three words of the show. Tell us all about what we can expect. <laughs> Chocolate Meltdown Hershey's. Okay, yep, I see. Well, let me tell you. So it's three contestants every single episode. And we bring them to Hershey Park, which is in Hershey Park, Pennsylvania, and Hershey, Pennsylvania. It's after dark, so it's nighttime. No one's there but us. And we give them challenges before we ask them to start baking and creating and molding and sculpting. And those challenges force them to go throughout the park, ride the rides. So it's all about fun, food, candy, but the first two words, chocolate meltdown, oh, uh, honey, there are some meltdowns, okay? It's something else. It's so much fun. And I really love when people work with chocolate and they make these masterpieces because it's really like jaw dropping. I'm just sitting there watching like, how do they do this? And this is going to be a fun way for the audience to really get to see how those pieces come together, right? Yeah, you know, I feel like in some way you can recre recreate some of the moments in small form at home. Get some candy and watch with us. Um, but yeah, it's lots of fun. And um, I'm definitely going to go back to Hershey Park. It was a really cool time. I want to go back when they're like, not just those overnight souls and ghouls going around, but you know, like real humans screaming and, and having a good time on the rides. It was it was pretty cool. Well, Sunny Anderson, we can't wait to watch it. This is gonna be some of the most fun, I think great Halloween programming yet there on the Food Network. We can't wait to watch it. And please, we invite you to Houston, Texas when everything opens back up. We'd love to have you in studio. Maybe we can have our own little Hershey meltdown kind of collabo in studio. Does that sound okay? That sounds, you know what, anything with chocolate, I'm in. You know, that's exactly what I told them when they said, hey, Sunny, would you like to host this uh, show at Hershey Park? I was like, oh, oh she what? <laughs> yes. I was like, yeah, yes. I'll be there. <laughs> but no problem. Plus, I have a little bit of Texan in me, so any request from Texas that I'm in. Well, San put our request in now, because consider us, <laughs> you're on the guest list all the time. <laughs> Some of those creations that the contestants make fully out of chocolate are truly incredible. And you guys catch the debut of Chocolate Meltdown Hershey's After Dark tonight at 9 p.m. on the Food Network. And we've got a link to learn more on our website if you want to see more with Sunny, HoustonLife.tv. Now, if we're talking about Halloween candy, you know we had to do a little bit of a trivia game. Derek and Courtney, I have brought you guys up to play some Halloween trivia today. It is going to be trick or treat trivia. Okay, so, so, so trick. this is the treat. <laughs> Oh, look at us. We're Courtney totally has the treat, which is going to be your true answers. We're going to ask a series of true or false. Okay. And Derek, you have the trick, and that's going to be false because you don't want to be tricked during Halloween. And this is a roll of toilet paper. Right, like you're rolling to put wrapping. toilet paper wrapping houses. Yes, there okay. we go. Okay, so question number one. Americans spend $250,000 on Reese's each year. Americans spend? Like Americans each spend. Spend. 200 and oh, no, as a nation as a nation yeah. I is think this is a trick false? I think that's false my guess would be way more way way more, more than that you guys are both correct yes. the answer they spend five hundred thousand dollars on Reese's I'm still year. surprised it's that low I would guess millions because in our household alone we spend I a lot. Listen, I know always have to have a bag I did know that that was one of the most popular Halloween candies so that is for sure mm, okay so question good. number two Skittles is the most popular candy. Hmm. Well, I mean, I love Skittles, so I'm, I'm just, I don't know, but I'm going to go with because I love them. I'll well. also say yes, because there are some people out there who, heaven forbid, don't like chocolate. Skittles right. seems like a nice fruity alternative. Well, that is really good reasoning, you guys, because you're both correct. Skittles yes. is the top-selling Halloween candy in seven states, the most out of any candy. Oh. oh. Love a good Skittles. Look at that. Okay, get nice and stuck in your teeth. Oh, and you can so put them good. in, like, your Sprite so that it makes them taste nice and fruity. Okay, here oh. we go. Question number three. Kit Kats were the first candy to be taken into space. Oh, I love a good mm. Kit Kat. It's one of my favorites. Me too. I like Kit Kats too. Frozen in the refrigerator or in the freezer. Yes, yes. But I'm gonna say this question's false. Okay. And I'm also gonna say false. I bet it was like M&Ms. M&Ms. Oh my gosh, you got the right answer. Because on they both. flow through space and you can like toss them and eat them, right? Oh uh, my gosh. Well, a Kit Kat wouldn't. 
Well, they're bite sized. They were brought onto the major space shuttle voyage of 1982. The M &M. visual of an yes. M&M &M floating through space, yep. it's literally you can wow. bite it. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, question no number crumbs. four. Yeah. Sugar Daddy's original name what? was Papa Sucker. Well, those were both my nickname <laughs> in high school. I don't even understand the question. <laughs> sugar Daddy's original name was Papa Sucker. True what? or false? So there was sugar, sugar Daddies. Sugar Daddies like a caramel oh, the, the, pop. The, 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 and the, the look like a raisin Yes. Look like a raisin No, those Trainers. are sugar babies. You're right. Sugar, a sugar Daddy Daddy's was on a, a long stick. One. Yes. Yes. Now that'll pull your fillings out. Yes. Um, oh, I think I won one of those at a Halloween carnival once. <laughs> Papa Sucker. I'm going to say it, that is true. It was originally called Papa Sucker because it was like a sucker. Yeah. This sounds weird. Okay, Derek is correct. Courtney, no, this yes. is actually true. Up until the 1930s, Weird. this caramel candy was actually called the Papa Sucker. It's a terrible name. That it's is really terrible. bad. All right, and just for funsies, we have one more bonus question. This okay. one is about Tootsie Pops. You have a dry erase board. You're going to have to write the answer to this one, okay? Oh, Lord. The question is, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? There is an oh, actual answer. There is an answer. It's and I, wasn't it part of the commercial at one point? It was, but... It was like, um... But who actually licks the Tootsie Pop? You just shove it in and suck on it, don't yeah, you? Yeah. Well, the world may never know, but this answer will. I'm going to go. Okay. Um, and it is uh, Price is Right rules. Closest to the answer without going over. Oh, man. I think I remember this. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? It was part of the commercial. Okay. It was like a, a lick a day. 365. Okay, well, the actual answer is 364. A licking machine designed by the students at Purdue University needed 364 licks on average. Even though you went over, you only went over by one. Derek, you're a little bit too high. <laughs> that is a lot of licks. Your time would be wrong. I think it was in the commercial. There, it was part oh. of the Like, it takes a whole year to get it, to the center of a tizzy. But that yeah. makes sense. But I do remember it saying, the world may never know. The world. I don't think that's enough licks. I really don't. I'm going to test this out. Tonight, All right, I'll let Papa you know Sucker. my findings. Sure. <laughs> that was fun, Lauren. <laughs> Next uh, time, I'll bring you the candy, I promise. Yes, okay. I know. Now I want candy and Skittles. Okay. Lauren, thanks so much. Sure. We're going to check in now with Joe Sam, who's jamming out at a record shop. Hey, Joe. <laughs> Courtney, yeah, we've been jamming out all this afternoon. They have some amazing music in here, but not just the music that you can see. They also have some amazing memorabilia. It's like a little museum. You can see different pieces from some amazing artists like Rigo Tavar and Vicente Fernandez. We're going to be talking about that when we come back here on Houston Life. And the owner, of course, still here 53 years later. Houston Life returns in just two minutes. Welcome back here to Houston Life. You know, the Hispanic heritage is important to the community of Houston, and that's exactly why we're here at Memo's Record Shop, because the music is also equally as important. I'm speaking with Memo here to tell us about not just this being such a staple in a community, 53 years you're celebrating this month, but all of the amazing things people can come in here and see, not just the music that they can hear, but all of the memorabilia that we see throughout here. Like I said before, it's like a museum. Tell us who we have in here. Oh, Vicente Fernandez. They broke the record the first time in 1975 in the same Houston Coliseum. After the show, they give me the, the charro suit. It's, it's the one over here. You can see you can see performer with the suit mm -hmm. over there. So this was the first time they, we, we broke the record or attendance at the Casa Music Coliseum. And I love you have the pictures that you have with the people here Rigo too. Tobar, he was <laughs> an idol. We put him in 1976 and two of the biggest places in, in Houston. They broke the record. Next day, Mayor Jim McCone gave the key to the city and the proclamation of Deo Rigo Tobar. There we go. Memo, really it's quickly, there. tell us why it's so vital to have Memo's Record Shop Latin Music here in the community because this is the last record shop here for the Latin community to come and enjoy. Tell us why it's so 52 important. 52 years, Joe, it's a long time being here mm -hmm. because we got all kind of music, most of the music for all over, Central America, South America, Spain, Mexico, all over, you know, and we got we have all kind of music. We got a music from the fifties, from the forties, from the six eighties, from the nineties. Yes. It, it just goes on and, and that's on. why the people come here. That's what we and love. we help them all the time to find the record they, they need. There you go. And I love music like I, like I told you before. And you I love, love music. And you I love, love the music. community too, right? Yes. And that's why we love Milo yes. and everything that he does. Again, we want to just say thank you for all that you do for the community and continue to keep this going. Yes. <laughs> Courtney, Derek, yes. we're going to send you, things man. back to you guys. We got some shopping to do.
I love my community. <laughs> you can tell he's passionate about it. And we love it too. I mean, forget the downloads, y'all. Go get your compact disc, your cassette tape, your vinyl right there in the East End. Support and shop local. Joe, thanks so much. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including an easy way to clean up the kitchen. Oh, sign me up for that. And as we head to break, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Nichelle. Derek and Courtney, tonight at 6.30 on ET, Stars and COVID, how it's affecting one of television's most popular shows. Plus, Angelina Jolie spotted with a Super Bowl singer, what we just learned. And we're cooking in the kitchen with country music star Trisha Yearwood. ET is coming to you from the brand new Academy Museum of Motion Pictures right here at 6.30 on KPRC2. Now, don't go anywhere. Houston Light will be right back. Coming up tomorrow in Houston Life, the four must-have items to help you declutter and maximize space in your kitchen pantry. Then we are celebrating National Literacy Month with a local nonprofit, what they are doing to help children in the community. Great stuff, and that's yep. going to do it for us on this Monday. Let's toss it over to Keith and Christine for the news at 4. Hi, guys. Hey there. Happy Monday. Let's have a great week.